Hello, good morning. Good morning, coffee moaners. How are you? How are you this morning? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's so weird the way we both did that at the same time. Oh. Oh. Donna Cardell, my first live podcast. Podcast? Podcast. I found this podcast over the weekend and I binge watched loads. We apologize. Oh, are you still okay? <laughs> You're right. You still survived. We are very expressive. We're incredibly opinionated. We get very hot under the collar. But if en anyone can have any opinion here, Donna, as long as it's just delivered with kindness and respect. Yeah. That's it. You know. It, so hang out with us, Donna. Yeah, yeah. Be, part, be part of the crowd. Be part of the crowd. Hang out, stay, enjoy. And if Parts of what we talk about you don't agree with, just ignore us. We're just gibbering away. Yeah. Um, you're about to say something. No. You were. I was just actually reading yeah. and reminding myself of what we were going to be talking about today, right. which is going to be red carpet sexism. Mm -hmm. Will smoking ban work? Our 16-year-old doesn't think so. Uh, Iran, Israel, hypocrisy, and Trump. Problem being... <laughs> <laughs> no. Apparently, he fell asleep in the first hour. I don't blame it. I would. I, I imagine blame those it. places are so hot and stuffy and boring. Hot and dull. And imagine he got... it, he's clearly got ADHD. Yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, you see him shuffling through those yeah. papers and everything, just going on and on and on. No, it's an ADHD's nightmare. Sometimes, when I want to feel compassion for Trump, I think of him as an ADHD of being forced into these responsible yeah. positions. And you think, poor fucker. Yeah. He's absolutely screwed. I do have a real problem with constantly diagnosing people, though. You've diagnosed I was, everyone. I was with my friend Hannah yesterday in the hospital and she was like telling me about this person and that person in the hospital and we, well, we, had, we ended it. up laughing because I was like I was literally diagnosing people not having met them but her just telling me things about their pets their shoes <laughs> yeah. I said my god it's a real problem she said Nadia we wouldn't have you any different she goes and you're often right what thing about me when we're out and about and doing things and meeting people do you go do you cringe when I do it because for me one of it's not that I cringe but I I, a little part of me, a, a little chamber of my heart closes and I go, oh no, she's doing the ADHD diagnosis with someone else in a group. What, what things do I do? Is it when, what do I say or do that you go, oh God, he's doing that thing? Um, I think it's when you are more nice than you need to be. Oh, right. You find it a bit icky. Yeah. You just don't think you need to do it. No, I agree. I think you can just... Yeah. yeah, a judge of character, Zoe Agnew, but not, she's not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm I mean, not a qualified psychiatrist, Zoe. I'm, 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 I am here representing somewhat the fact that she does diagnose. You don't just diagnose people with ADHD. You diagnose everyone with, with everything. everything. I mean, absolutely everything. <laughs> it suddenly became Boris Johnson. Like, ah, I know what that is. That's narcissism with a drop of yeah. bipolar. It's like a menu. With a it's like a recipe for a dish. Uh, I people, bet at least... people are mental health recipes for Nads. So there's yeah. a little it's bit of bad. addiction with a bit of bipolar problem. one. We might have a smidgen of BPD. I've got to stop we might doing have a bit it. of the, yeah, might a, a, and you literally put your I hand mean, into the little yeah, spice tub of ADHD and you do this. You go, oh, it smells lovely, which and drives me mad because I can never focus on your hand fast enough. And then you throw it in the food. But actually, I've always done it since I was a child, but I didn't have the terminology you hadn't been diagnosed no 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 <laughs> but before i was done i mean anything i would i would always i i used to say this thing that i've got a filing cabinet in my head i always used to say that from as young as i can remember and i would file it was like literally i can say i could go like that remember well, saying it was this. ordered i can remember saying ordered. this only on this it, only on people right. but i would say to my mom that i just go she goes oh god how do you remember that about this because i would go Grrr, because i'd have put them into something isn't it funny because nothing else in my life do i file do you know you you actually suffer from something you don't know about what dcs what's that diagnostic compulsion syndrome is it a thing yeah you've oh, got it I've dcs got it. Diagnostic compulsion syndrome. But, but what I've got to do is just stop saying, giving the diagnoses because I've always did it all my life, but I'd never put it with a with a name. I would just go, this person is the sort of person that da 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 But now I add a, a name to the end of it. Were you showing off about the fact that you know that there's an E at the end of diagnoses, plural than diagnosis? I didn't know there was. You could just tell me that. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I had fuck you all idea. Scroll back, everyone, and listen to the way she said diagnoses. 
it was an accident. <laughs> didn't know it at all. Diagnostic. And actually, if I saw that, I'd probably correct someone and say, why have you put an E on it? Diagnosis compulsion syndrome. Apparently, a lot of people in the medical establishment and in medical jobs have it. It's a compulsion well, to got diagnose. It, and I'm not even medical. I know. I've just I diagnosed can, you with it. It's a fuck. Oh, you've just diagnosed me now. It's a problem. You, you I'm going to start attacking this problem. You also have diagnostic um, fear syndrome, which is you can't let people diagnose you. Can you? Not even doctors. What do you mean? I never knew I had ADHD until you and the girls kept telling me every five minutes and never thought of it once in my life. I've made all these syndromes up. You do know that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, good morning. Uh, quick question. I just want to ask someone, what are you watching? Thanks, I, I, we've wanted, I've wanted to review so many things that we've started. We, we are trapped in a, in a hellhole of our own making, which is Hey You and, and Married at First Sight. But Ripley, I hear on Netflix, is doing all the rounds. We love Andrew Scott. Um, the Three Body Problem, which I watched the first episode, was horrified by. Um, then there's Fallout. But the biggie that I really, and a number of you guys, Zoe, Laura, Baby Reindeer, uh, a lot of people oh. are saying how good the series Baby Reindeer. We need to Reindeer. watch that and review it because Mark and the girls saw it years ago as a play. We see, yeah, absolutely. We saw it as a one man play, and he it's, was Mark sensational. Talked about it here before, and it was so creepy and, and distressing. And but it's I hear a real that, life story. Yeah, and I hear that it's transference to Netflix as a series. Transference. Yeah. Are we being taken transference? That's transference. You're the sort of person that says it's rest, migration. restaurant. No, I'm not. No. What's the other restaurant. way? Restaurant. What's the really posh way that people say restaurant? Because I once did a whole series where restaurant was in the title. Restaurant. And every single episode, I had a discussion with the producer because the way they wanted me to say it, I said, I've never heard any fucker in the world say res restaurant. No. Restaurant. Anyway, God knows what went out in the end. <laughs> oh, horrible. 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 It was. That coffee was rank we need to get something to clean that fucking coffee maker is becoming more and more undigestible and un oh hideous welcome to coffee moaning <laughs> i say ambiance as french says lee Piet. um ambiance, oh, ambiance. lee Durren. i watched the first episode of reindeer but couldn't get into it oh okay well i mean i haven't seen it so i'm going to check it out but uh, it's stalking if you're into stalking, well, you might be into stalking. Stalk. No one's into stalking, but, but my that kind of a story. God, that kind of a story. And where it gets really interesting, this isn't a spoiler, is the entwinement between him and his stalker, where it goes and where, and where it ends up. Get a descaling, says Emma does live. All right. Yeah, we will. All right. Okay, careful. Right, what are we going to start with? Uh, red carpet sexism. Let's play it. This is Hannah Waddingham. Now, look, lots of you are massive Hannah Waddingham fans. We don't really know her that well. No. I only know her from, and Lee will know this as well. Lee, Lee, what do you think of her? But um, at ITV, you know, whenever she's on anything, everyone says, oh, my God, it's she's so much fun. Yeah. She's so down to earth. She's this, she's that. So, yeah, she's, she's got a good reputation. statuesque, though. Be careful saying her that arms. to her. arms. Yeah. She's got those gorgeous arms. She's, she's... Ted Lasso, ones. that's that's her big yeah, thing. Yeah, but we never watched Ted Lasso, we watched did we? We just, we, I've never seen her in anything. Didn't really get on with it. I think, was she in White Lotus as well? I think she might yeah, really get like on with White that Lotus. either. We haven't liked anything she's been in. But she comes across she's as very normal. Talented. Russ, uh, she comes across as normal, whatever normal means. Okay, right, so this? she was at the premiere and she said this. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, you never say that to a man. Oh my God. <laughs> Don't be a dick, no, no, otherwise no, no, I'll move no, off. No, no. <laughs> Thank you, What would you, what, right, would any of you do the same? That's what I'm going to know, first of all. She scares me. Would any of you do that? So you've got everybody looking at you, you're there in your beautiful dress, you're there to promote, I don't know what she was promoting, and... Um, and you stand up like that Hi, without laughing about it, without giggling about it. You say it dead straight, and then you walk off. You dick. Because this don't is, be such a dick. This is what I said to this is what I said to Mark. I said, 
He said, yeah, but it's because of her position. I said, well, no, actually, when no, you think... No, I didn't say of, that at all. N- no, you said it's easier when you're a no, star. No, no, yeah, no, but what I was inferring was it is much easier to feel you can stand up to yeah. people if you have a profile and That's what huge adoration. Said. That's what I just said. Yeah. If you're a star, he said, but if you're a star, it's a lot easier to stand up like that and say, well, I said, but actually, when you think about it, and we both agreed on this, it's actually very rare. Now, a diva you know, like a, a known diva, like Mariah Carey or somebody, if she said that, everyone would be like, oh, Mariah Carey, oh, God, she's so brilliant, she said that. But to actually stand where you are supposed to be just looking fabulous, where you are just a clothes horse, you're a, you know, you have to be there to sell whatever you're selling. I, I think that was, inc- I, I loved it because, as I said to Mark, I would not do that. I'm not, I'm not there yet. Would you yet. have shown your leg? Would you have I done what they'd have, asked? Probably, I would have, Mm. I would have gone, oh God, and I would have laughed and flashed a bit of leg. Right. And so that's really made me think that. Wow. Because it's about always wanting to be liked. It's about difficult women, you know, don't be difficult. And actually, I like being a difficult woman, but I haven't really pushed it out far enough yet. And actually, if you said to me to do something that I thought I'd go, don't be a dick. No, I'm not saying that. But 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 because I trust you and I know that you love me and I know that you like me, that I can just be totally my authentic self. And that was her. She just went, no, I'm not Show, doing that. Can you and show me you some know, soldier? You know what else <laughs> that I liked about it? Neither was she aggressive or starry with it. No, she was it fine. wasn't Hannah Waddingham, a famous person, that could do that. She goes, don't be a dick. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I, think, that, but I think that's what everyone likes about her. She speaks straight. She's very down to earth. I think she she won an award recently where she was a bit pissed and she said she was. I mean, I think that's her shtick, isn't it? I mean, so what about you guys? Would well, you Sophie laugh Clement it off? said she wouldn't be able to do it. I'm yeah. just trying to find you. I really want to know whether, um, how many women. Sophie. Uh, 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 so remember, you're on the red carpet, banks of photographs, fans there. Everybody's looking and smiling and you're supposed to be just lovely. It's a lot of pressure. Would you and be able to do moment, it, And in that moment, you're just your full authentic self. Say, no, no, yeah. I'm not having that. Does celebrity exist without press? Yes, but I think, I don't think no, you need to necessarily, doesn't. I don't think you necessarily need to show your leg to be celebrity. Yeah, you know I mean? mean, the thing is, they will, they will, she's, Zoe's she's looking, she, she's looking amazing. She's, um, she's never sold herself on being, you know, a, a, a body person, is she? She's not like, because there's lots of people that go to the red carpet and, and great that they do, who are like full on. So she's not so, ever presented herself like that. So I just think it's really disrespectful. Okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a minute because I want to. I Ellie Denning, would. I probably would. I tend to open my mouth before I think so. If I didn't feel comfortable, I would no doubt react in some way. In, in, in the, the same, same way. way. Sorry. Yeah. See, I would feel mortified, uncomfortable, but I'm so tuned into just laughing stuff off that men say that are a bit uncomfortable. Hannah Waddingham. Okay, in, in, in Devil's devil's Advocate, so in potential defence of, say, the photographer who said it, if they're used to lots of lub-lubs and celebs who are quite happy to come on the pay, on, onto the red carpet and show their legs and do everything and, and all this sort of stuff, could it have been a sort of misjudged but innocent request? She was wearing a skirt. And if a dress, I'm just let me, if, if you have a dress that runs a high sort of... Which she called? didn't. No, did she not? No. Are you entitled to ask a little bit like a photographer? You hear photographers and they do photo, give us a bit more of this, show us a bit more of that, do us a bit more of that. Is it not actually the red carpet, a actually photographic shoot in which photographers have a right I, to ask? I, I don't think this discussion has anything to do with the photographer because there will always be men that think they can say, show us a bit of that show. It's got nothing to do with him. It's got to do with the way that we respond and the fact that we always told from a little girl, so just smile, oh, he's being a bit silly, oh, da, da, da. Mm. And so that's the only part of the story that interests me is what how she responded to him. There's always going to be people like that. Like yes. Him. Oh, but well, it's how do we teach our daughters yes. to, to not think they have to laugh off comments that they're not comfortable with? Yeah, no, and I, I totally agree. Of course I do. I mean, Cass R, wasn't her dress long? Yeah, how would she have shown? Like, I think someone else mentioned it just here. The really important part of all of this is, is yes, younger women who aren't famous, seeing a woman like her standing there and very normally just kind of pushing exactly. it back and, and because seeing the Because it wasn't diva style. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't. It was just, she could have been at Sainsbury's, the way she said that. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, imagine if she'd been at Sainsbury's and someone had said, show us your leg so you of can, lamb. 
Well, darling, don't think that that, that men don't say that every bloody day hey, say babe, something like that. I, 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 not... When women go out, so that's why it's good because she did yeah. it in a relatable way. Say somebody is say somebody's in Sainsbury's today, a young person that's seen, or even me. Like the next time somebody says something that I don't like, I'm going to say I don't like that mm. rather than go. <laughs> 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 there you go. Um, smoking ban. This is a new bill or a bill that's being brought before the British uh, go uh, Parliament, House of Commons. Um, and this is a bill not to ban smoking outright, but this is a bill that hopes to, well, seeks to make it illegal, illegal for anyone who turns 15 this year and younger from ever buying cigarettes under what's being called the tobacco and vapes bill. So if you're if you're going to be part of what they call Generation Alpha, anyone born since 2009, if this law is passed, you will not be able, no one will be able to legally sell you cigarettes. And it will be, I think you can be charged and fined if you are smoking them under that age. What I want to understand though is, this, this applies to anyone being born since 2009. How are they going to implement this with say a 53 year old adult? who says, I want to smoke, and just because of their birth when they were born. At first, I thought I had a very strong thought on this. I thought, yes, this makes total sense. It's bad for you. Anything that prevents people from smoking is good. And doing it gradually and for a future generation, making it sort of feel sort of outmoded and, and Which illegal. Means future generations will get the cigarettes from the people that can buy it. What, so when you're 65, we're going to have loads of 65 year olds outside new, outside news agents asking 83 year olds, "Can you go in and get me a packet of facts, please?" Well, potentially, I think that I think the people that designed this don't understand addiction, well, and don't understand that people, young people, always want what they can't have. No, absolutely, absolutely. So, so I mean, I I applaud anything. You know, I applaud the fact that we're trying to look for ways to do this. But I maybe I'm just not understand. I don't understand it. Understand I don't what? understand how it's going to work. Well, um, no, no, no. I, know, I mean, I know. Yeah, what yeah. You've oh, said, I see. I see. Right. I don't see no. how it will work. No, I only. I not only don't see how it's going to work. I think it's entirely. It, it, I, I just. I mean, look. It's possibly. It's probably going to become law. It's a free vote. So you know. Though the thing that makes me hesitate about the whole thing is that all those who are anti it are people like Liz Truss and all those classic Tories who go, we should have the freedom, you know, Nick Farage, no, we should have a freedom to do what we want when we want to do it and all that kind of stuff. And as soon as I hear them talking, I kind of go, well, hang on a minute, I don't want to be on board with this law. I don't, I see it becoming extraordinarily impossible to implement. I don't, you know, it's going to generate a black market of smoking, isn't it? And cigarette and tobacco for, for certain generations, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't Sorry. get it. I don't, I just don't think it's going to work. What do you think, guys? The tobacco industry has a lot to answer. How do we think it could for? work? I don't really know. Good chip lollipop. Bring back the roller. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, so many people use roll ups now, don't they? Just because of the price of lot young people. So many young people smoke roll ups now. Yeah, my mom smoked from the age of twelve until the age of twenty eight. She stopped because my dad helped her to stop. She's sixty years old and has never smoked since. I mean, most people phoning in, and it's incredibly animated out there. People are incredibly. Uh, you know, animated by this whole idea. I think the idea is a brilliant one. I think the practicalities of implementing it are incredibly difficult. Um, it will cause a black market, as Lee Absolutely. Beach says. They should also do something similar then with vaping, because that generation shouldn't need vapes to give up. Well, exactly. Um, I think they should be banned tomorrow, vapes. Yeah. Honestly, they know exactly now what the damage is. They should only be sold in a pharmacy they should do it says christos i always remember in my late teens how much it stayed with me when i when i learned that the marlboro man advertising the cigarettes died from lung cancer from the very product yeah and when i went on um a smoking retreat hypnotherapy thing they they had they had treated the marlboro man and you know what he'd had an arm Mm, he'd lost right. an arm yeah. and he only had another arm and he was still smoking with the other arm. Yeah. You Youngsters have a desire. I was worried that if he lost that arm, how was he going to smoke? That's what they said to me. Yeah, yeah. Youngsters have a desire to smoke anything. Jennifer Winter, young people will always want to try smoking. Vaping has overtaken that slightly, but the need and desire to do it is evergreen. They'll just get someone else 
to, to buy, buy them. them. I've just got very funny visions of of, of octogenarians standing around outside uh, off licenses buying cigarettes for. I mean, I think cents. the way they're making them more and more and more and more expensive is another way. I mean, I just couldn't believe it well, when, you, when you had to buy that packet of cigarettes the other day, how much it was. Well, and a lot of people are saying, why don't you go that route? Just tax it out of the, out system, of the system and make it so prohibitively exactly. expensive and, and just marginalise it and make fewer. I mean, there are such few, few places that you can actually smoke them in. Um, so, yeah, well, I'm I worry totally it will sure. become a bit like you know cocaine you yeah, know? yeah and it'll be like i don't know 50 60 quid and it for might a packet be stronger of bags and, and more people dangerous. that are really wealthy can smoke all the time and... yeah i agree okay uh in other news um trump is in court obviously with the whole hush mummy uh hush mummy hush m what's wrong with me why do i keep getting my words wrong i don't know i don't like it I like. Uh, say ellipses no what was it ellipses. diagnoses so Donald Trump is obviously in court for the first day of his hush money case. Uh, first oh, US president so to stand criminal trial. He's incredibly uh, sort of... Anyway. No, no, but he's orange. That he's makes orange. If, if he was his real colour, he is definitely white. Yeah. And he's... He, look at the swellings all around his face. Yeah, no, it's not He's good. not a healthy man. No, he, ne he needs some turmeric, I think. <laughs> Although he's the colour of turmeric. It's got inflammation. Um, so two of the big takeouts from yesterday were they're struggling to get a jury together because one of the... Get this, one of the questions they have to ask for, you know, they have to kind of both sides, defence and prosecution have to be happy with the choice of jurors. But one of the yeah. questions they're asking is, um, do you have a strong opinion on Donald Trump? To which Every everyone single is person saying yes. Because yes. you're either going to love him or hate him, aren't yeah. you? There's uh, no in between with Trump. So each time someone says yes, they're literally shown the door. So I mean, <laughs> well, so what happens if no. they can't find a jury? Do they have know. to get as many... I don't know. Do they have to get 12 good men and women that are judges or something? 12 angry know. men. Was that yeah. what it was? <laughs> They're gonna have to, they might have to come over here. They might have to try the other But everyone on the planet has an opinion on Donald Trump. Mm. So um, so there's that. But also more, more telling is the fact that he fell asleep in court. Uh, the New York Times uh, reports that he drifted off. Uh, but this was before lunch. And then they, they have this curious sentence. I haven't got it. But they said something along the lines of, but he was curiously more alert after lunch. Are they suggesting you went into the toilets and sort of, uh, and had a bit of a pick me up? No. Uh, or are they suggesting coffee. you ordered twenty McDonald's? He doesn't drink, does he? Does never drunk, never no. done drugs. No, exactly. He's, he's a teetotaler. Um, and finally, uh, Iran Israel hypocrisy. We've got in the title, uh, and we want to talk about this. I'm just going to play you David Cameron, obviously our foreign secretary, uh, being uh, having the fire held to his feet by um, Kay Burley on on Sky News now. Before we get into this, the first thing I want to say is, as we've said many, many times, Iran is a really incredibly horrendously repressive regime. No one is, I think, supporting Iran. Um, but Adderall, that's exactly Ellen, what he was probably taking in the loop. Um, but here's the thing. I think there is a real feeling that unless we seek to understand the grievances of other countries and cultures in our response to Israel's you know, treatment of Gaza, not just since October the 7th, but prior to October the 7th, the illegal settlements, the occupation of Palestine. Unless we're all willing to kind of look at that and understand it and understand what's driving such hostility, resentment, uh, a desire to fight against oppressors, um, I think we would be, we do well to look at moments like this with Iran and go, okay, well, we don't like Iran, obviously. No one likes Iran rationally. But are we, are we beginning to pick and choose, not beginning, because we can see it's already happened, when and if and to whom we apply international law? How are we deciding when it's right to respond, when it's right to engage in self-defense, and when it isn't right to engage in self-defense? I'll give you two examples before we pop over to David Cameron. Because Israel, right to self-defense, we've heard a lot. Palestinians don't have a right to self-defense, because if they enact it, it's called terrorism in any form. So the Palestine in the West Bank, Palestinians, West Bank, Palestinians, they're not Gaza, allowed to return. Yeah, they're, they're not, not allowed to self defend. Yeah. You now can, you can walk, an Israeli can walk into their house and literally say, "Get out!" and yeah. they can move in. So this 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 phrase, self defense, that we're all now you know jumping on because Israel had the right to self defense. We've heard that so much. And at what point does self defense become genocide? That's the question I'd like to ask my students. Um, so you've okay, we've heard self defense. So. By the same standards, when Iran's consulate was blown up, 
do are they not too entitled to self-defense regardless of what you think of their country okay regardless of what you think of their country and regardless of whether you think they should or shouldn't surely don't be surprised when it happens right so let's just have a listen to this see all these countries that have somehow wondered, well, you know, what is the true nature of Iran? It's there, okay. in black and white. What would Britain do if a hostile nation flattened one of our consulates? Well, we would take, uh, uh, we, you know, we would take the very strong action. Mm. And Iran would say that that's what they did? Well, what they did, as I said, was a so massive they, attack. So yeah, they were right think, to respond, but they overreacted, is well, that what you're I, saying? I'm, what I'm saying they is that the, right atta the, attack, the attack they carried out was on a very large scale, much bigger than but people they have accepted. A right to respond? Well, countries have a right to respond when they feel they've suffered uh, an aggression. Of course they do. But look at the scale of that response. Had those weapons not so been they shot right down, respond, but they there, just could have been, there could have been thousands of casualties, including mm -hmm. civilian casualties. I think that's a really important point to take into account. Can I just quickly say, before I forget it, he said, but look at the scale of that response. Hang yeah. on a minute. Yeah. Why has no one said in the, the Western government said the same thing about of Israel? Gaza. Look at the scale, scale. of the so response. Do we think Where the there scale, have been civilian casualties. Do we think this... Who thinks that the scale of the response of October the 7th could have been a little over the top? Anyone think that? Has anyone... Does, is there... And, you well, know, and even if... Hang on. And even if they are saying it now... When it was so self-evident by about October the 12th, why wasn't it being said is right back then? Is it a sane response? Just yes or no or whatever you want to say. Let's read out a few comments. Uh, Freya, I can see that you're, you're struggling again, my darling. Uh, lots of love going out to you here. Once again, very difficult environment for us to be able yes, to attend um, to you in the way that we would like. Did you call the Samaritans? I really think yeah, you should. I haven't seen, I can you. see that people are commenting on your comments, but, it, you know, the chat is fast and furious and, and uh, sending you love, sweetie. I think you're getting support from the group. Um, I can't deal, says Zoe Agnew, it's insane. Um, Donna Pack cannot stand the hypocrisy. He doesn't care about all the dead Palestinians, but is up in arms over this. Well, if you want to read some more. But the other thing I'd like to say about this, too, is they are all diplomatically lying because everyone in the Middle East and the West knows that the, the nature of the attack that Iran did wasn't going to hit, actually, all the, all the kind of targets that everyone wants to claim. So what's happening now is a real act of gaslighting has happened. Iran whatever wrong reasons, spurious reasons for their own regime or what have you, they need to sort of show face and everything. But they had that. So they had an, and they issued their defense. They said Article 51 of the UN Charter yeah. mm -hmm. allows them to kind of respond. They responded. They said, this is it. They've also said in their statement, this is the end of the action. This is our response. End, and then we had, story. and then we had the um, Israeli ambassador sitting on LBC. Was this yesterday or today saying Iran could attack London next? Come on. They're trying Come to fan on. the flames. They're gaslighting the West. We, Lon London does not have a problem at this moment. But there is not a problem be between going London and Iran. Iran, as we've said, is a horrific regime. And no way are we standing up for Iran. But Iran informed America a few days before. Like Israel tells us all the time that they informed all of Gaza whenever they were going to bomb all their homes, whenever they were going to flatten whole areas, whenever they were going to bomb hospitals, schools, universities, hospitals, schools, universities. They told people before, and there was only then that they bombed them. You know, I feel, and maybe I'm wrong, that there is an awful lot of racism being involved here. Of course here. there is. Of course there Does is. anybody Me else feel that that might be the situation? A couple of other points to make just quickly. As Meechube says, Iran is not going to attack any NATO country. They're not stupid. But also, <laughs> going back to this idea, you know, the Palestinians, one of the tactics of the way in which the Palestinians, both in the West Bank, I don't want us to keep thinking that nothing's happening in the West Bank. What's happening in the West Bank is, is, is in many ways much more twisted and it's perverted awful. and insidious and up. nasty. Have a look. Um, but what happens to the Palestinians in mm. different ways in both Gaza and the West Bank is they don't know when things are going to happen and how things are going to happen and in what way things are going to happen or the extent. One thing we all knew on Saturday afternoon and had done for five days was that Iran were going to do something. So Israel had plenty of warning, plenty Iran of time said to it. Iran said that the only person that was killed was a poor Tragedy, Palestinian a Bedouin. Bedouin kid in the desert. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so what this is, this is diplomatic playmanship. But the this point is, is, Mark, they did have a right to do that because Israel 
attacked their consular. David Cameron sat there and said that. But, but he wanted the response to be different. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. And I agree. Look, if you start to go spiraling back, and of so course, mad. we're not, one isn't trying to kind of neatly dodge the fact that all of the proxies in the Middle East, Hamas, Hezbollah, you know, the Houthis, there is an, an Iranian backing of that. So for many people in Israel, the Hamas attack on October the 7th was very much an attack by an Iranian proxy. And this is, you know, we prior to this, we've not seen all of the number of attacks. All of, the, but all of the attacks, all of the issues with Israel and these groups and and everything that's going on there is to do with ultimately the illegal occupation and taking of land and the subjugation of an entire country and nation. None doesn't mean you sign up to the uh, governance or the human rights of any of these countries surrounding no. Israel. Not at all. It doesn't mean that Jordan can actually hold its head high in terms of human rights. Not at all. Nor Egypt nor Saudi Arabia, nor Iran, nor any, no, damn no, country. Not any of them. Nor They're all damn... Let's not forget what was that awful saying, something rendition, when all these countries were sending people, rendition. all extraordinary rendition, sending people to other countries to be tortured because they didn't want their hands dirty. Nobody's hands are clean. No country's hands are clean. Yeah. And, 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 you know, who's to say that the mess that we are in is not down to decades and decades of pompous, white men sitting pontificating about the rights and wrongs and only via them and their own fucking experience yeah so unfortunately and david cameron did that perfectly I yeah think, it was a, it, there was a colonialist sitting there yeah, giving God. us giving us what for just finally on, on on all of this i would say that my concern now having felt that that would be the end of it with the iranian thing is that the west given that the west is giving this line and is is sort of propping up and doing the thing that Israel really needed this to do. Netanyahu needed this in order to be able to double down on, distract from Gaza, and double down on the, if you like, victimhood they need to keep pushing out as a narrative beyond Gaza, because they've lost that. They've lost the sort of majority support of the rest of the world. This is an opportunity for them to reconfigure that. If I was advising Netanyahu, I would be like, someone said somewhere, take this hit, sit back now, sit, because... If he responds, what the West, I'm slightly worried about what the West are doing here is they, they're not saying they'll support Israel if, in an attack on Iran. But I do feel I'm hearing the mood music around the, the other side of whatever Israel does in response. I'm, I feel like we're already hearing the arguments that are being set out for why it's OK for Israel to respond. They, everyone's trying to draw a huge distinction between Iran's right to self-defense and anyone else's right to self-defense. And that's my only cause for concern, because... Listen, what did they achieve, Israel, by, by, by bombing that consulate? So they say there was two Hamas leaders, right? They, yeah, they could. What, my question is this, why did they actually do it? Was it to cause this disruption Netanyahu around the whole been world? poking the bear. Yeah, because they want everyone the to get involved in this. Let's not forget, want... let's not forget, what I, someone yesterday said somewhere, Iran has supported uh, Hamas to the tune of however many million billion. Um, guess what, guys? Netanyahu supported Hamas to the tune of something like one and a half to two billion too. It suited Netanyahu to have Hamas because it split the Palestinian cohesion in pursuing a two-state solution. It's, it's interesting. It's There it's are mess. vested interests in the Israeli governance yeah. for extremism to exist. Think everybody, on it. The, Think on the it. fingers in all the different pies, and everybody is just like mm. it, it's the manipulation, isn't it, of, mm. of the of the populations? Mm. And most of the populations don't want any of this. They don't want to see people being killed. They don't want to see children being starved. Mm. Most human beings underneath the the governors that unfortunately we live under, the leaders, don't want this anywhere. And a quick note on Jordan, who. Uh... <laughs> By association, I can see why this has happened. Uh, there are photographs and images and AI images of the King of Jordan being draped in an Israeli flag, etc. The foreign minister for uh, Jordan, who is sensing a, a bit of a PR disaster here, because of course Jordan assisted in shooting down the Iranian drones. Um, Jordan made, did, did make a statement yesterday, which was missed, interestingly, in the Western press, where they said, look, this is about sovereignty. If Israel does the same, fires, drones, etc., and they run the risk of landing, imploding, or causing any damage in, in our airspace or across our airspace, we will be shooting them down too. So I do think well, poor so old Jordan caught in the middle. Yeah, they are, they are yeah, by association, they're in a bit of a... Do you know what I think sometimes? I think when, I, when you know, that weak 
that I knew the king. Yeah. When he was a, just a prince, he was just a boy, and we were all in Jordan, and we were like on boats and swimming, and how carefree he was, and how and you think terribly English, terribly English, because his mother's English. And I look at him now, and I think, my God, what a burden! What a I what, said, a, what a burden! What a weight! <laughs> what a weight to well, carry on weight. your soldiers, yeah. shoulders, soldiers. He he's got no yeah. choices here. He's in the pocket of America because America holds the country up with billions, mm. you know. So mm. it's a right old piccalilli, isn't it? Absolutely. Okay, guys, look, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Freya. I think everyone there was doing a, a, a much more effective job than we could have done in the live in supporting you, holding you, giving you advice. I hope you find the answers Please that you need. Please get in touch with the Samaritans. And also, I th no, well, help. I think there are other issues around your partner. So I think I will try and go through the uh, live chat later and we'll pop up a... Um, uh, 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 an appropriate kind of helpline of some form for you. Um, obviously, these live chats are recognised for you. You're reaching out. You're looking for help. These these chats. It's a difficult, difficult forum and place for this to happen, um, and us for us to give you anything that's really meaningful. But I can see that lots of people have been very kind to you. So thank you mm -hmm. to everyone else for for holding holding Freya steady. And also, can we just send some big love to Christopher Cundall? Just oh sending my God, you some Christopher big love. Cundall. Yeah. Oh. We can't not do this. We've got to do this quickly. What's that? Because I said it on Instagram. What's that? Get up there and skip. Oh, mate. Did you not get the video? Me? Yeah. No. The Instagram. So, skipping. Can you still skip? Let's have a look, Mark. Oh, you can. Your fascia is good. Now you. Can you do it with such Fascia? I'm more worried about my bladder. Um, I just want to show them the difference here. It's a very big I've just snapped energy. my left knee. Have you? No. You, she, did you hear the relish? <laughs> Have you? It's like Dina. It's all, it's all, um, it's, um. By the way, I'm going to be live with Kaz tonight at seven for a alcohol and not drinking or drinking chat. 100 days of sobriety. Okay, here we go. The surprising see? role of fascia in active aging. Now, look at this. Look at this chat. Oh. Wow. No, he's not trying. Let's get Nanny Dye to do it. So this is why you need to look oh after God. your fascia. Out of practice. No, it's, it's lost it. Oh, it's lost it. So this is all about your fascia. So you're filibustering. Get on with it. Get on with it. Look up about fascia and then make sure you look after On your marks. Can all the women pray for my bladder? Yeah, praying. Go! Oh, I can still skip. Not as fluid as me. Oh, Hang shut on. the fuck Hang up. On. What's so good about your Hang skipping? On. Check out the velocity of this. No, sorry, Mark. You're not looking how you think you're looking. Your, your feet are low. Look at this. My knees are up to my belly. Ha! Who's a better skipper? Look up your fascia and start looking after it. The fascia stretches over the whole body. I go to a fascia um, massage person. Dirty cow. All Not right. Often 